Okay, this is our video for Unit 9, Day 7. It'll be the last video we watch for Unit 9 over spheres. Okay, this is a sphere. So we're going to start by talking about some parts of the sphere and then look at how to calculate volume and surface area for spheres. Okay, a sphere is a solid in which each point is equidistant from the center of the sphere called the center point. Okay, and then the concept of a great circle, or the great circle, slices the sphere into two hemispheres. So it's any circle that is the widest possible circle that could go around a sphere. So if you're thinking of this as a globe, uh, the equator and prime meridian would both be great circles. Okay, so here are the parts of a sphere we're going to be discussing. Okay, this distance, or any distance, from the center to a point on the sphere is called the radius. And this line around what would look like the equator is one of our examples of a great circle. This point would be the center. And then if I connect a uh, what we consider like the pole of the Earth, that would be a diameter. Okay, this axis actually between the poles north and south. Sorry about that. Um, but a diameter is a radius extending in one direction and a radius extending in the opposite direction. Remember, diameter is twice the radius. Okay? And so to find volume and circumference, we're just going to use the formulas shown here. All right? The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r squared, and the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And these are just uh, formulas. I can show you how we get these and where they come from, but. Uh, we just need to know what the formulas are and how to use them. These formulas will be given to you on your reference sheet, so the real trick is just plugging in the radius and finding each of these. So for number one, we want to find the volume of each of these spheres. So for number one, we're going to use a radius of seven. So we're going to use our volume formula, four thirds pi r cubed, or the third power, Okay, you can remember volume is a cubic unit, that's why it's r to the third power. Okay, make sure you pay attention to that. And then to multiply by four thirds, it's kind of like you're going to be doing pi r to the third power times four divided by three. Okay, and that's how we're going to do that. All right, so let's just plug this in. We've got four thirds pi times the radius of seven to the third power. Okay. And there's a couple different ways we can do this. I'm going to do 7 to the third power times 4 times pi all on the top of the fraction. And when I do 7 to the third power times 4, I get 1,372, and then I still have pi, and that's divided by 3. And so what I'm going to do now with my calculator is to multiply this number by pi and divide by 3. Okay, make sure that you multiply by pi, hit equals, then divide it by 3, and we get approximately... 1,436.76 cubic inches. Okay? And so what I want you to do is to try and do number two. Pause the video to give yourself some time to do that. And it's just the same way we did the previous problem, but instead of using 33, 33 is the diameter, so you want to use a radius of half of 33 which is 16.5. Okay, if you need more time, pause the video to make sure you can do these calculations, but this is what you should get for the volume when we plug into this formula. Okay, when I do 16.5 to the third power, that part alone is 4,492.125. Then I have to multiply by 4, divide by 3, and multiply by pi and that gives me this answer. Okay. Now, if you're trying these calculations and you're getting different answers than I get, make sure you talk to me in class about what you might be doing wrong with the calculator. I do want to show you on the calculator um, what button you would push to do to the third power. So I'm going to go back to that step right here. Okay. To do this part in the calculator, 16.5 to the third power, we're going to use the button that looks like this. Okay, right here. That's your power button. Okay, 
Okay, so I would do 16.5, and then I would push this power button right there. And I would do it to the third power, hit the three after that. And then you hit enter and you get that number I got. Okay, so let's try some problems that talk about surface area. Okay, the surface area of the sphere uses this formula. 4 pi r squared. Okay, so surface area in this case is 4 pi r squared, because area is a square unit measure. And the radius is 2.8, so it's 4 pi times 2.8 squared. We're going to do our exponents first. 2.8 squared is 7.84, so I have 4 times pi times 7.84. If I do all those calculations, I get 98.52 square meters. Okay? And so, again, I want you to pause the video and I want you to try and find the surface area for number 4. Okay, again, just using this formula, 4 pi r squared. But the radius is not 24, the radius should be 12. Because the diameter is 24. When you do that, this is the answer you should get. 1,809.56 square millimeters. Okay, when you do 12 squared times 4, you get 576, and then multiply by pi. Okay, for the next couple examples, all right, we're going to do volume, but we're going to talk about hemispheres. Now, hemispheres are just um, spheres cut in half. And so for volume, it's very, very simple. The formula for volume of a hemisphere is 2 thirds pi r cubed, okay? But you really don't need the formula as much as you just need to take the volume formula for a sphere and divide it by 2. When I divide this formula by 2, I get this formula, okay? So we can just think of it that way. That's how we get a 2 thirds. And in this case, the radius is 5 kilometers, so we're going to take that to the third power multiply by 2 thirds and pi. Okay, when we do 5 to the third power, that's 125 times 2 is 250. Don't forget we have to divide by the 3 on the bottom and then multiply by pi. We get approximately 261.8 square or cubic kilometers. And if you did the original volume of a full sphere and divided it by 2, you would get this. Okay, so let's try the next problem. All right, we're actually going to skip over number 6. If you want to try that one on your own and check your answers later, you can. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to move on to number 7 and talk about the surface area. Now, this is your formula for surface area. Sorry, real B. I meant surface area of a sphere. Instead of 4 pi r squared, it's 3 pi r squared. And we didn't just divide by 2. Okay, volume, I'm sorry, write it again. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Okay, but for a hemisphere, half of a sphere, we're going to take 4 pi r squared and divide it by 2, but that would give me 2 pi r squared. The problem is, when we cut a sphere in half, we include this great circle as part of our surface. So this bottom circle of your hemisphere is included. Well, the area of that sphere is pi r squared. When I do 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared, that's how I get 3 pi r squared. So all we're going to do is plug in our 14 for the radius. which in terms of pi would be 588 pi. But then when I multiply that, I get approximately 1,847.26 square yards. Okay? And that's all we really have to do for surface area and volume of spheres. Okay, we're going to skip number 8 also, because I do want to do some application problems. All right, so let's talk about how I might find the surface area of this shape. It kind of looks like an upside-down ice cream cone. 
Well, again, we just want the areas of all the surfaces. Okay, This cone surface, if you remember from a previous lesson, the cone surface area is pi r squared plus pi r l, sorry, l for slant height. Okay, so that's this 13 here. And hemisphere surface area, we just learned, was 3 pi r squared. But here's the problem. This cone surface area includes this circle. Well, that is stuck between the cone and the hemisphere. So I don't want to include the area of that circle in my surface area. So I need to take this and subtract pi r squared, because that's the area of the circle. Okay, so we're going to exclude that this time. But then I also have a hemisphere that would normally include that circle as a surface, but now it's between the two figures, so it's not included either. So I need to take away a pi r squared from this. So I'm going to subtract pi r squared and go back to just 2 pi r squared, because 3 pi r squared minus this 1 pi r squared is 2 pi r squared. So the surface area here is that plus that. So I'm going to do 2 pi r squared with a hemisphere area that I can get to. And the radius of this would be 4.5. It's 2 pi times 4.5 squared plus pi times the radius of 4.5 again times the slant height of 13. And then I can simplify that and get my answer. Okay. When I reduce this, into, or simplify, not reduce, when I simplify this in terms of pi, I get 40.5 pi. And when I simplify this in terms of pi, I get 58.5 pi. Now, I've been trying to teach a lot of you that instead of multiplying this number times pi and getting a decimal, or multiplying this number times pi and getting a decimal, then adding, I can actually combine these as like terms. I can take the two simpler numbers, 40.5 and 58.5, and add them, and then just multiply by pi at the end, because they are both in terms of pi. Okay, so when I do that, I get 99 pi, and then when I round that, I get approximately... 311.01 square meters. And it's square meters because it's surface area. Okay, we've got one final problem I want us to do. Okay, it's talking about a family referred to by the name of the Henleys. The Henleys have a silo on their farm to store grain. Okay, it looks like this. Assuming the entire space is used, they fill it up all the way to the top, what is the maximum amount of grain that can the silo hold? Well, that's talking about the volume. So all we really need to do is find the volume of this figure. Well, that's the volume of a cylinder plus the volume of a hemisphere. So we need to go back and remember our volume formula for cylinders, which is the base area times the height, which the base area for a cylinder is pi r squared. So I'm going to do pi r squared times height. And the volume of a hemisphere is two-thirds pi r cubed. Okay, and so I'm going to need these measurements for each one. Now the radius is 11, and so I need to find the height of this cylinder. It's not 45, but here's what you notice. From here to here is one radius less than the 45. So I'm just going to do 45 minus 11, okay, which is 34. So that's the height of my cylinder. So I'm going to do pi times the radius of 11 squared times 34 plus 2 thirds pi times the radius of 11 cubed. Okay, I'm going to do those calculations. We need. I'm going to show you the result. Um, for the sake of time in the video, which is approximately 15,712.15 cubic 